My God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Our God is risen, He is alive, He won the victory, He reigns on high. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have won the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. Glory to God. You are the risen King. Seated in majesty, you are the risen King. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. As you can see, I am Jeffrey Zimmerman filling in today for Pastor Sean Pinder. And uh, as always, I am honored and privileged to be here on this platform with all of the precious saints of the Most High God, ministering to God's people, sharing the Word of God in this time of prayer with all of you. Uh, my wife Melanie and I are so thrilled and excited to be able to serve alongside Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy in ministry, and uh, you know it's it's just uh, it's just great. So. We are excited. I hope that you all have been enjoying our series, Your Keys to Spiritual Victory. If you've been blessed by, by this series so far, uh, type below the video, please, and let us know uh, what God is, is doing for you through this, this series. We, we would love to hear from you. So we're going to continue again today in uh, the same series, of course, Your Keys to Spiritual Victory. And today we're going to talk about tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Amen. Now, uh, so far we've talked about Jesus. We know he told God yes uh, from when he was 12 years old all the way to when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, we saw that he subjected himself to his parents at 12 years old. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told the Father, Not my will, but thine be done. And then we talked about Moses. And we saw how he said yes to God. When God called to him from the burning bush, you know, uh, Moses said, Who am I that I should lead your people? And he had lots of questions for God. He asked them. God answered them. And Moses finally said, Yes. He told the Lord, Yes. And then, of course, we talked about Esther. Esther was facing a very dangerous situation. She had to go before the king and might have lost her head over it, literally. You know, but she fasted, she prayed, and she felt she knew what she had to do, and she said yes to God. And it's so important for us as people of God, that when God calls, we say yes. And that is one of the major keys to victory in ministry, in finance, in your marriage, in being a parent, in your working on your job, whatever you do to say yes to the Lord. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I ask that you would Touch the hearts of the wonderful people of God today. Melanie and I join our faith with your people, Lord. God, let the word of God come forth under the anointing. 
Let it be so simple that even a child can understand what thus says the Lord. Minister to your people. Encourage them. Strengthen them today, O God. Kura pataya kalalababaya si. Just lift your hands towards heaven and just tell the Lord yes. Right now, from wherever you are, just tell him yes. Tell the Lord yes. Yes, God. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. Just tell the Lord yes this morning. In the name of Jesus. There's nothing that gets the devil more upset than when we say yes to God. And we're going to study about a man today by the name of Jonah. Everybody knows the story of Jonah. And uh, this is a man that didn't want to tell the Lord yes. And as a matter of fact, at first he didn't tell the Lord yes. So let's look at that in Jonah chapter 1, starting with verse 1. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So God was telling Jonah to get up and go to Nineveh. Now the city of Nineveh, was a very wicked city. And the people of Nineveh hated Jonah's people, the Jews, the children of Israel. So, and the children of Israel hated them too. So this is not something Jonah wanted to hear. This was not something he wanted to do. He did not like these people. He hated what they did to him and his people. He did not want to go to Nineveh. So, verse 3 says, He rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Isn't that foolish? Running from the presence of the Lord. David said, Where am I going to run away from you? Where am I going to go that you're not right there? You know, we can't get away from the presence of God. He's everywhere, right? But it says he went from, he fled from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof. And he went down into the ship to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4 says, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. How many of you have heard God tell you something that you did not want to hear? You know, it's easy when God tells us, you know, well, you're going to have a financial breakthrough or go here and I'll give you, you know, a house or when God uh, leads us to a place where we can get a new car, you know, or something like that. We like those kinds of commands but when god sends you into a place where you don't want to go when he tells you to do something you don't want to do how many times do we uh, kind of run from god i'm guilty i've done it before you know i felt like god was telling me something and sometimes we even say no no i rebuke you devil that's not god that's the devil talking you know and we we try to say it's the devil but we really we know that it's God talking to us. It's just something that we don't want to do. So we try to run from God, you see. But how many of you know you're not ever going to get too far trying to run from God before it's going to catch up with you? Watch this. Verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Now, look at what's happening here. This ship that Jonah is in, the sailors of this ship, the personnel that were in charge of this ship, they weren't responsible for what Jonah was doing. They had nothing to do with Jonah running away from God except that he had paid them to take him to Tarshish. 
So they were taking him to Tarshish. They, they didn't know anything else. And yet here God is sending a storm that's about to take these guys out. You see, when we don't obey God, when we disobey him and even try to run from him, we can cost other people. And sometimes we can cost them dearly. I mean, these guys' lives were at stake. The ship was, this storm was threatening to break this ship apart. These guys were in serious trouble. And verse 7 says, They said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So these guys were doing the best that they knew how. They were casting lots to try to figure out what was going on. Why was God so angry? What, what did they need to do to correct the situation? And the Bible says they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Now right here you can see the hand of God controlling the situation. It says here, the Lord sent the storm, right? Then it says, the lot fell upon Jonah. So God even controlled the direction that the lot went to pick out the man who was responsible for this catastrophe. Then verse 11 says, they said unto him, what shall we do? So, so they asked Jonah, they said, what's going on? And so Jonah told him, he said, look, I'm a man of God. I'm a Hebrew. And God told me to do something I didn't want to do. And I'm running from him. You know, he told them. And so now in verse 11, they're saying, what shall we do unto thee? That the sea may be calm unto us. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. It was knocking against the side of the ship. And these guys had were probably seasoned sailors. They'd probably seen their share of storms. But this one had them scared. So this was a serious, serious storm. So they asked Jonah, what shall we do? And he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. So Jonah had a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge right here. He said, Take me up, cast me into the sea, and the sea will become calm for you. Isn't that amazing? God had given him the solution to these people's problem, even though jo Jonah was in rebellion. Amen? So, but these people didn't want to throw him over the side because they didn't, you know, they didn't want him to die, you know? They didn't want to do that. They knew he was a man of God. They didn't want to throw a man of God into the ocean. You know, so it says the nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not. They tried everything they could to bring that ship in to the land and get their situation under control, but they couldn't do it. The Bible says the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. The sea was fighting against them. You know, they, they, were, they didn't have any defense against the ocean. Amen. So. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, Lord, has done as it pleased you. In other words, they were saying, God, when we throw this man into the ocean, please don't hold it against us. You know, they were just going with what Jonah had told them, you know. And, and they did their best to try to get away from it. They just couldn't get away from it. There's the only one way to do it, and that was to do exactly what, what Jonah had said. Verse 15 says, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and immediately the sea ceased from her raging, just like Jonah said. As soon as they tossed him over the side, the sea was calm. How about that? Amen. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. So this freaked them out. You know, that they had thrown this man into the sea and all of a sudden the storm that was right there was now gone. And the Lord had prepared a great fish 
to swallow up Jonah, God was ready. You never catch God unprepared. Amen? God was ready. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. My God. That's, that's a miracle he didn't die. Amen? But how many of you know that even though sometimes we disobey God, and sometimes when he tells us to do something that we don't want to do, sometimes we may say no, and we may run away. How many of you know that God is the God of a second chance? You know, God is merciful. And he's not trying to wipe you out. He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to, he wants you to repent. He wants you to come clean with him. He wants you to say, look, Lord, I messed up. And that's exactly what Jonah did. And this is at the end of a, of a, of a prayer that Jonah said from inside the fish. And he said, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. In other words, what Jonah was saying to God is, God, I surrender. I repent. I was wrong. I shouldn't have disobeyed. I shouldn't have run away from you. I repent. Whatever you tell me to do, if you'll give me another chance, I will do it. And look what happened. The Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Amen. Chapter 3, verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city. This is exactly what God told him the first time. See, God's command hadn't changed. God didn't change his mind. Even if we run from God and we don't want to do the things he wants us to do, you know, when we make it right, God will be right there, exactly where we left him. Remember when we talked about Jesus the other day? They came back, and Jesus was right there in the temple where they left him. God's still right there waiting for you to come back to him. Amen? Isn't that encouraging? He said, preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And verse 3 says, Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. This time Jonah said, yes. He made a promise inside the fish. He told God, I'll do what you tell me to do. And he kept his promise. He kept his word to God. And look what happened in verse 4. We'll jump to verse 4 here. Jonah began to enter into the city of Nineveh. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I don't know if this is the shortest sermon ever preached, but it's definitely one of them. In eight words, these are just eight words that Jonah said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Eight words. But the Bible says the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. The Bible says the king of Nineveh laid aside his royal robes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and every single person in the kingdom, even the animals had to fast. Everybody in Nineveh fasted. They were serious. They meant business. And verse 10 says, God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them and he did it not. What an amazing victory. This is a miracle. The people of Nineveh were wicked. They were evil. And yet, eight words from the mouth of a man of God and these were the words of God because God told him, preach unto them the preaching that I bid you. Eight words. And the people repented and they turned from their evil and God spared an entire city because one man said yes. 
I'm talking to somebody today. You may have been running from God. You may have told the Lord no. You may have been disobedient. You may think it's over for you. Maybe, maybe like Jonah, you lost everything. You know, I mean, Jonah was inside a fish for three days and three nights. He had no idea what was going to happen to him. He might have thought he was going to die in there. You know, so he, he turned back to God. And if you're turning back to God today, I've got good news for you. It's not over for you yet. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. He's waiting. Yes. Sing it with us. Yes. Yes. Just tell him yes. 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 Tell the Lord yes today. Tell him yes. Hallelujah. Rapataya kalala bababaya si. Robatia na bababaya si. Rapatia kalala na bababaya si. The Lord is here. He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to clean you up. He's ready to get you out of that bad situation that you're in. And if you don't know the Lord God today, you can know Him right now. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came to earth in the form of a man, and you died for my sins on the cross. They put you in a borrowed tomb, and then three days later, you rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. From this day forward, I will serve you. I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you said that prayer today and you meant it with all your heart, then we want to welcome you into the family of God. Type below the video and tell us. Say, I just surrendered my life to Jesus. And friend, that's the beginning. You told the Lord yes. And that is one of the keys to spiritual victory. Just tell him yes. Amen. To support the work of God, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it on your smart, on your smart devices. You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you, we appreciate you, and a huge thank you to our partners who make this broadcast possible. We love you. We'll never take you for granted. God bless. Bye-bye.